Partners in business and life John Farrell and Sadie O'Hara are readying themselves for the den. Together they believe they are the best people for the job, whatever the job, but will the dragons agree? Fixless is a platform for the booking and completion of plumbing, electrical, boiler services and a range of jobs that fall under handyman. And then you'll take it from that point onwards. I think it is an advantage um, being a couple. Um, I suppose we bring different strengths to the company. No, we've had a few arguments <laughs> as, as it was being built. I don't know the figures from last year and going forward, the projections. What makes you think you're going to be in a thousand stores in the UK? Look, we love Gavin Duffy's personality. I think everyone does. It just doesn't happen like that. Eleanor McAvoy is in the, the business of dealing with households. It's funny the different things that inspire people. It's a fitting company to that would relate, to would relate to fixed list. Good afternoon, Dragons. My name is John Farrell, and this is Sadie O'Hara. We are the owners of FixedList.ie. We're here today to ask for 150,000 euro investment for 15% share of our company. So FixedList is a platform for the booking and completion of the following services. Plumbing, electrical and appliance repair, boiler services, and a range of jobs that fall under the heading Handyman. It's very important to note at this point that we are not a directory service. All staff are direct FixList employees. So how to use FixList? You can log on to our website, you can download our free app, which is available for iPhone or Android, or you can use our low call number. There are a few significant advantages for a FixList investor. This service is currently not available in Ireland or the UK. You cannot book and pay online for the services we provide. We see this as a gap in the market. All our services are priced up front and detailed on the app and website. When they book a fixed list service engineer, they book a certified, qualified and fully insured tradesman to complete the works. I'll now give you a quick demonstration on how to book a service with fixlist.ie. So this is the fixed list homepage. So you would select from one of the four icons. So we'll select plumbing. It's then broken down to different areas of the home or business. So we'll select bathroom. We break it down further to the fixtures within that room. So we'll select shower. We list the potential issues that could happen with a shower. So I'm just going to select electric shower replacement. This pop-up screen basically informs the customer that if at this point they add a second or subsequent job, they will receive a discount. The next step in the process basically asks for the customer's county that they live in. So we'll select Galway City. They will then receive a booking confirmation email. Dragons, with your, with your expertise and investment, we can take this company to a four million turnover in three years. John and Sadie believe FixList.ie takes the hassle out of home maintenance. They're asking the Dragons for 150,000 euro for a 15% share, but with ambitious projections. Gavin gets straight down to business. So what's the current revenue of uh, this business, uh, John or Sadie? We started off the company in April 2015. To the end of the year, we turned over 130,000 euro with 10,000 gross profit and a net loss of 51,000. If you don't mind, I'd like to take you through the three quarters of the year trade. So quarter two, we turned over 22,000 euro, a gross loss of 27,000 euro. Hold it there for a second. So you lost 27,000. Where did you get that 27,000 from? Who lost it? It was our initial investment into the company. Which was how much? We spent 22,000 of personal money building the website and the app and then we invested 70,000 set-up costs into the company. Again, was that 70,000 your money? Yes. All right. When I'm booking a time on the website, I can see the times that are already gone, can I? So you actually just book a day on the website. So okay. the evening before the engineer is due to arrive, you will receive a text message of the uh, window of time that the, the engineer will arrive. What sort of time windows do I have? You don't get any time windows. I have no time you, windows. You can only pick the day and then we you get your text message with your estimated time of arrival between two hours. How did you get into this business, John and Sadie, and, and how do you know each other? Well, we're a couple. A million euro couple, by, judging by your valuation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Who's the boss then? Uh, I suppose we bring different things to the company. I have a very different background to John, so I would work on more the advertising, the marketing. So you're a team, but it sounds like you're the boss, Sadie. <laughs> I suppose I, I look after the day-to-day -day running, making sure the engineer does what he's supposed to do. You obviously want to grow this business. You want to take it nationwide, I'm assuming. Yes. You don't still plan on using the direct employee model to do that, do you? We think to maintain the level of service, we need to have the direct employees for a certain amount of time. 
I suppose down the line, eventually, this model would lend itself to a franchise model. For scale, that, that would be difficult because it means you have to employ the people before you can gather the work. And in terms of manage your business and your cash flows, that's a dangerous yeah. model if you started to grow very quickly. I just find it risky. Uh, the plan we have is to expand by one van per month going forward. Do you see, that would be my concern. And, and remember, I'm in the electricity business. What I do, it doesn't matter where in the country they come from, I can take on the customer. Yes. You could end up with a situation where you're starting to get growth, you don't have the people in place and you lose the opportunity, or else you put the people in and you don't have the work and you lose money. Yes. An early blow for the couple. Eleanor's experience in this area has put a dent in FixList.ie's business model. Gavin wants to know more about their vans. So how much does each van and a tradesperson cost you? 8,000 for the van and 6,000 for the engineer. It's a 14,000 investment. To me, it's a huge upfront investment in it to build your, your employee base as opposed to the contractor route of giving yes. a guy a, a margin on each job. It is, yes. But I suppose we offer an awful lot of security with the company. People want to know if, if you have a toilet in your house that's not flushing right, you don't want to wait. Nine times out of ten, when you ring the man in the van, the last thing he wants to do is go and fix the toilet that's not flushing. But you'd need huge coverage across the country to, to be able to offer the service nationally. Yes. And we really want to, I suppose, aggressively add the vans that we can meet that demand. Well, you know, I'm almost at sea here because uh, on the surface of it, John and Sadie, it looks a bit mad because any investor would be absolutely agog at the overhead here that's going to ramp up very, very quickly. And yet you're finding customers at a rapid rate. But I have to tell you, I'm frightened for you and would be for myself as an investor, but uh, not not frightened enough to leave it alone, uh, obviously. Uh, it's uh, whetting my, my appetite. What I'm interested in is uh, just operating leverage. In other words, can you grow your revenue line faster than your cost line? Maybe give me projections for year one, year two, year three, just the top line sales and gross margin. It's all based on adding one, one van per month, 2016. Our turnover is 880,000, gross profit of 320,000, and a net profit of 220,000. 2017, we have a turnover of 2.5 million, a gross profit of 1.1 million, and a net profit of 880,000. 2018, we have a turnover of 4.5 million, a gross profit of 1.9 million, and a net profit of 1.1 million. 1.6 million, sorry. What's driving that though? How are you achieving that? I mean, people don't get cheaper year over year, and this is, you're selling people's time here. Inflation is going to make wages go up over the years. I don't understand how your gross margins get better. The more vans we put on the road, you're not putting the same amount of office staff to the, we would have the same amount of office staff to two vans as 10 vans. Can I just tell you where I'm at on this, guys? We all know that the job can very often take a lot longer than anticipated. So what you thought was a simple problem is a bigger problem. The day backs up, the schedule backs up, and you're actually not able to deliver the kind of customer service that you're promising. And that really is what your, what your, your USP is, what your unique selling point is. I'm just not, not, not convinced personally that from an investment perspective, you're going to be able to cover the whole country and deliver what, what what you say you can deliver. So for that reason, I'm out. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you've got this combination of technology and customer service, which is very well controlled by you in the market that you're in now. Um, and I think you'll probably have a little bit less control as you move further out from where you guys are. So I don't see your current model scaling. And for that reason, I'm out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. With Barry and Alison out, is the FixList.ie expansion plan starting to hit a bumpy road? I just know from my customer service experience that it gets very complex very quickly and suddenly you get you know, a certain number of employees, you've got to employ managers and the thing has to grow and it gets very complicated. So the scaling thing is, 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 is difficult. I think it can happen slowly. I don't think you can do it quickly if you want to retain the standards that you're, you're clearly aiming for. And for that reason, uh, I'm out. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. 
the balance between taking on the full-time employees. I still think you could stand over a service with good people, with supervisors who check their work. It's too risky for me. It could go terribly wrong. I wish you all the best, but for that reason, I'm out. Thanks very Thank much. You. You've wrecked my head. I just want you to, to sort of realise that because I'd invest in you all day. I just can't buy into the model. It's the 8,000 for the van, John and Sadie, right? Yeah. For 200 euro, I could put a guy in a nice T-shirt like you're wearing, a pair of Snickers trousers and a liveried van that he, she would supply. And I'd prefer my investment to have been going towards the marketing of it rather than being eaten up at a quick burn rate Though you think it's very quickly into profit, but I have to say I'm out. Thanks, Thank Gavin. you, Gavin. Thank you. Just could not get my head around that business model. It just. I agree. And I want them to prove us wrong, and we will be saying in a couple of years' time, "Wow, did we miss an opportunity?" You know. Today's investment wasn't going to decide us to stop where we are or anything like that, we're still moving and we're still going to cover the country nationwide.